Gas. With Metal Gear Solid V, the Phantom Pain nearly upon us, it's the perfect time to look back at the series as a whole. In an effort to put the series in context, I'd like to take a look at the story of Metal Gear Solid as it developed. Metal Gear Solid 4 concluded the Metal Gear Solid saga, and the story of Solid Snake. <laughs> However, there were 31 years in the series timeline between the events of Metal Gear Solid 3, set in 1964, and Metal Gear, set in 1995. Additional prequel games have been made to fill in the gaps, culminating in the upcoming release of Metal Gear Solid 5: The Phantom Pain. Take him out. Released before Metal Gear Solid 4, 2006's Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops is set in 1970 and tells the story of how Snake met Roy Campbell and Gray Fox and took on another of the boss's disciples, Jean. The whole story turns out to be a way for Ocelot to secure the rest of the Philosopher's legacy for the creation of the Patriots. However, in recent years, the game has been stricken from the canon. 2010's Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is set in 1974, ten years after the events in the Soviet Union that led to the boss's death in Metal Gear Solid 3. Snake is living with his mercenary army, the MSF, on the coast of Colombia, when he and his business partner and fellow soldier, Kazuhiro Miller, are contracted by Costa Rican scholar Ramon Galvez and his student Paz. She came to me to study peace. Her name is Paz. Paz Ortega. The MSF take the job after Snake and Kaz confront Galvez. Our friend, the professor, is likely KGB. What about you, comrade? What do they call you back at center? Well then, allow me to get straight to the point. Who then supplies a tape that has a recent recording of the boss's voice. Go home. Boss, voice print analysis confirms that this voice is indeed that of the legendary hero and criminal, the boss. Prompting Snake to investigate the CIA's activities in country. Galvez supplies an offshore oil rig for the MSF that becomes their mother base, which the player can upgrade over time by doing mercenary missions and capturing and recruiting enemy soldiers into the MSF. Snake, with the assistance of Sandinista guerrillas who have fled Nicaragua, begins to investigate, making contact with their leader, Amanda, and her child soldier brother, Chico, with whom Snake eventually forms a bond. Snake is fine. Snake discovers the CIA effort in the area is being led by Hot Coldman, who intends to launch a nuke using the device of a wheelchair-bound scientist, Huey Emmer. Hey, you okay? Don't. Otacon's father, who created several AI tank prototypes, with the nuke being on the last one, Peace Walker. Snake continues to track Coldman and discovers Dr. Strangelove, another former lover of the boss, who has attempted to recreate her as an AI to be the pilot for Peace Walker. Unable to destroy the AI due to his love for the boss, Snake fights another of the prototype AI tanks and begins to question what he knew about the boss's actions in 1964. As Snake takes down the AIs, Huey is able to use parts from them to construct MSF's own nuclear tank, Metal Gear Zeke, a prototype Metal Gear Miller believes will act as a deterrent from other nations attacking Mother Base. During final preparations to launch a nuke from Peace Walker, Coldman captures Paz prepares to fire the nuke at Mother Base. Snake infiltrates the facility in Nicaragua and discovers Galvez, is actually Vladimir Zadornov, has been working with Coldman all along. Zadornov betrays Coldman, targeting Cuba with Peace Walker in order to foment discord in South America when a U.S. arms base launches a nuke on a Soviet satellite state. In the end, a legend is merely fiction. You'll die as the boss did, and become as did she, an eternal fraud. Go, go, go! The Sandinistas arrive, capturing Zadornov, but as Coleman dies, he activates Peace Walker, which Snake confronts. You've got to stop Peace Walker before she can launch her nuke! Unable to destroy it and launch imminent, Peace Walker, under the will of the boss AI, takes itself out of commission, drowning itself in a nearby lake. 
At this point in the game, there's no indication that there's any more story. Those Zadornov escaped several times, and Dr. Strangelove comes aboard to help with Metal Gear Zeke. You could continue taking mercenary missions at this point, and never see the game's ending. Upon finding Zadornov one last time, Snake kills him in self-defense, and Miller tells him Metal Gear Zeke is moving on its own. Snake discovers it's Pa, who has been a spy all along for Cypher. I'm taking it back. Taking it back? Where? To our leaders. To Cypher. And demands Snake follows Cypher's orders. Cypher will gather all information, watching over the world and guiding the will of its people, all while they remain blissfully unaware. There will be no one to oppose them. For the first time, the world will be ruled by a single will. Until the new order is in place, you and your army will be the force that protects it. With Snake refusing, she tries to launch a nuclear strike on the East Coast, and Snake takes out Metal Gear Zeke to keep it from happening. The resulting explosion tossing Paws into the ocean. That name Paws mentioned at the end. Miller reveals that Cypher is Major Zero. It also means zero. And Snake, in a speech to his troops, tells them of his plans for their own nation, Outer Heaven. We go where we're needed, fighting not for country, not for government, but for ourselves. We will be the deterrent for those with no other recourse. We are soldiers without borders, and yes, we may all be headed straight to hell. But what better place for us than this? It is our only home, our heaven, and our hell. This is our heaven. This effectively sets up the events for the original Metal Gear. Big Boss has a Metal Gear, a nation of mercenaries, and plans to create Outer Heaven. However, there are still 21 years left before Solid Snake infiltrates Outer Heaven, so it's no surprise that Metal Gear 5 Ground Zeroes helps explain the gap. Set in 1975, Snake and Miller learn that Paws has resurfaced in a Cuban detention center meant to recall Guantanamo Bay. Chico, having heard this as well, mounts his own rescue operation, being captured in the process. While a UN inspection is planned for Mother Base, Snake plans his own mission to extract Chico and Paws in order to keep a line on Cypher. Though he is successful, Paws has been implanted with two bombs by Skullface, leader of the XOF. A medic on board the rescue helicopter removes one, but after discovering the UN inspection was a smokescreen for an attack that destroys Mother Base, Boss dives out of the helicopter as the second bomb explodes, the resulting crash putting Big Boss in a coma. Finding cassette tapes on the grounds reveals that Skullface's goal in interrogating Paws is the location of Cypher for plans of his own revenge, and he and Big Boss are shown colluding in one trailer for Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain, while the voice of Cypher can be heard in another part, explaining his plan to carry out the boss's will. This world will become one. I have found the way. Race, tribal affiliations, national borders, even our faces will be irrelevant. The world that the boss envisioned will finally become a reality, and it will make mankind whole again. With Snake's coma between the two Metal Gear Solid 5 titles lasting nine years, that's a solid chunk of relative inactivity. And Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain looks to revive the mother base building, mercenary missions, and soldier collecting gameplay mechanics of Peace Walker, effectively making it a big budget Peace Walker remake in terms of the metagame. How Phantom Pain will change the story remains to be seen, but no Kojima-directed Metal Gear title hasn't massively changed things in one way or another. It promises to be a wild ride. Les enfants terribles.